Hello and welcome to Please Watch Our Spooky Podcast. I'm your host, Connor, and he's my co-host, McPherson. Guys, this is this is crazy. I'm right beside him. That's right. We're doing this together for once because this kid doesn't have internet. <laughs> Guys, my landlord knocked out my internet for five days. I got a text from him saying, it's back on. And I'm like, oh, anyways, that's my life. <laughs> that's right today we're talking about Coraline Coraline is a film that was made in the year 2009 oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> the year 2009 it was directed guys give me a minute give by me a minute. Henry Selick Henry Selick and, and it was awesome it was one of the first films to be released by the studio from Leica Studios which is a stop motion studios. They just make stop motion movies all the time. Uh, a little information about their co-founder. So if their movie doesn't make a lot of money, fun fact, the co-founder, Travis Knight, is the son of Phil Knight, the co-founder of Nike, which is why the studio is still able to make films easy because they got that Nike money. So this guy, Travis Knight, is my favorite Nepal baby. I don't know about McPherson, but he's my favorite Nepal baby. Yes, I totally relate to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want to get in? Do you let's get to... let's get into this. Okay. okay. Coraline is an awesome movie. First of all, if anyone's listening to this and they haven't watched it first, please just watch it. Go watch it. Watch it. It's an hour and like 40 minutes. I never watched this when I was a kid. Apparently a lot of people did. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I watched but, it. Wow. Guys, I watched it when I was like, I went to a party and I watched it and it gave me nightmares, but I was like seven. So don't, if you're, if you're 22, you're fine. You better not get scared by this or we will make fun of you. Guys, I was seven years old when I watched it. It scared me. But if you're 22, you'll be fine. To be fair though, if you have arachnophobia, maybe sit this one out. That, yeah. There's a lot of spiders. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we, the start of the movie is a beautiful intro with so much detail. Yeah. You see a doll be made right in front of your eyes. In stop motion. In stop motion. Which probably took like two months at least. And you see these creepy little hand, scissor hands, Edward scissor hand kind of thing, making these dolls, taking out the, taking out like the, like a stuffing from a bear, taking that out and then filling it up with like, at like a sand, sand or sawdust. That's an interesting part of it. I, I guess she fills all of them with sand. That's later revealed. It's yeah. Kind of strange. And but then, oh. anyways, start and of the movie, right? We have Caroline, who is moving to a new house with her family. Mm -hmm. uh, her family kind of ignores her a lot. Mm -hmm. She's an only child, obviously. She, yeah, obviously. It's <laughs> just the way it is. But throughout the start of the movie, you can see Caroline exploring her new house and uh she's neglected by her parents a lot so she has to kind of just explore things by herself she is very much neglected like the you have a conversation with both her parents her dad just her her mom is like Coraline get out of here I'm trying to work like Coraline <laughs> there's something there you're not giving a whole lot of detail about why they're there but you get an idea that something happened and something that we noticed today just watching over clips that the mom has a net brace because of an accident so we don't know what happened onward to make them move there but they moved there because of certain things leading up to this accident yeah and then the dad's on the computer just typing away <laughs> doing his thing <laughs> he became a meme so you know what that's worth it oh yeah <laughs> but so yeah she gets to explore around first day she doesn't really do too much it's kind of a good safe situation to like show like what's going on without any risks or stakes or anything interesting you just get to explore the world and obviously it's well done it's a beautiful place it's a simple spot there's like fog everywhere you don't get to see around you but there's detail everywhere uh yeah even though it's like a foggy disgusting place it looks gross but there's still a beauty to it it's very much fall yeah spooky um but yeah then we see her meet her uh, I like a neighbor, neighbor, name, neighbor, why can I not talk, name YB. Homeboy YB. And YB's like, where are you from? Where are you from, Coraline? <laughs> and Coraline's a hard chick. She's like, you know what? 
I hate you. <laughs> why be more like why be alive? Yeah, no. Oh. They kind of they had a bit of a feud at first, I guess. But you know what? YB is cool. I YB, like YB. YB is cool. Yes, agree. I would say to explain YB, he's like, he's definitely an inventor. He's a creative guy, but he's also very awkward. It looks like he's been living here his whole life for sure. He has a hunchback. He has a bit of a hunchback. That's fine though. And a welding helmet on. Adds to his character, honestly. Honestly, we love welders on this podcast, guys. Go YB. Um, also, like, next, like, it's so quick. Next morning, she gets... A little gift from YB, and it's a doll of her. And like, what would you do in that situation? You know, to add to that, it's not just a doll. It's a doll in the exact clothing she was wearing when she got to the house. Yeah, that's kind of weird. The movie kind of plays over it. If that happened to me, I'd be very weirded out. I would, but she's just like, eh, that's kind of funky. Whatever. I would, I would throw that doll out. Yeah, a little weird, Maybe. but apparently, like. He found it in her grandma's, like, just trunk. Somehow. I don't know how. The movie doesn't explain it. It's very subtle things. So, like, the idea is probably, like, there's multiple dolls. And maybe Coraline's, like, the last doll that the other mother made. Because, I don't know. It's weird. It's very, like... Ooh. Point is, the main antagonist in this movie, she can manipulate a lot of things that you would think she would not be able to. Like, she probably sent that doll into this realm. Mm. She made it, and she just whisked it into, like, real life. Mm. She definitely has the power to do that, I would say. Yeah. All right. So, from there, she wakes up one night. She goes, see, the, she looks for around. She sees a door, right? A little tiny door in, like, a, we'll call it, like, a common area room it's not like a living room yeah anything. a little crawl space door yeah and then her mother's like if i get this open for you you need to zip it you gotta leave me alone she, you need to shut the fuck up poor coraline <laughs> she opens the door and it's a brick and then she's like okay fine this place sucks and then she goes to bed and i'll let you talk right so she goes to bed and she hears like a mouse that's enough for her to be curious to just go downstairs mm. and the mouse leads her directly to the door Obviously, her being curious, she opens the door. And obviously, there's just a, a portal to another realm, basically. Would you walk through that? Oh, yeah. You would? I would. I That's would, so cool. I feel... Okay, I wouldn't do it by myself. Who are you going to talk to, though? Your parents who don't give a fuck and they're sleeping? <laughs> it's true. She's an only child. See, if I did that, I had I have siblings and I would bring my sibling with me. Just get your gang of siblings to help you in there. And then we all die together. We all become dolls. <laughs> but, so, this gets to the main juice of it. The story here is that she finds an alternate realm or world that is exactly like hers, except everything is the way she wants it to be. Including her parents. The mom, she wants her mom to be a cook. Her dad's a cook in her universe, and the dad's like not a great cook. <laughs> so I wonder how good the mom is. But like the mom's cooking food, there's a scene that she's like, "Oh, here comes the gravy train." I'm like, "Oh." That's a really well put scene as well. It's like the food looks so good. This is really cool. The food looks so good, but yeah, basically you don't really see anything wrong with this other world. Like, Aside from everyone has button eyes, what do you mean you don't see anything wrong? Hey. The first thing she says when she sees other mom is, you're not my mom. Because she clearly has big black button eyes. Side note, Coralite's smart. She's smart. And dumb. And dumb. But mostly smart. And an only child. Yeah. You gotta stand up for yourself. But yeah, like nothing really happens the first night, right? Yeah, she gets to experience the world a little bit. And um... Then... Yeah, she, I, I would say that the other mom doesn't have too much control. She's trying to lure her in at the start. She's not making any big moves. She's just trying to be like, hey, this world, way better than where you came from, for sure. And Corin was like, yeah, I believe you. I just had boat from a, I had gravy from a gravy train. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> Let me in. And yeah, you know, she goes to bed, and then she wakes up the next day back home. Yeah. Which, okay... It really creeped me out because, like, she didn't go through the door. So the other mother or something carried her through when she's asleep to the other 
to our own world. It does also lead into the theory that she never left, though. It's possible. It's possible. It's definitely possible. I don't know. I don't want to go there. I like the simple story of Coraline. Like, there's some complexities, but... Honestly, you have to dive into those yourself. Yes. There's a lot of things that they don't answer that you have to go, hmm, you know, think about it yourself. Because even after I watched this movie, I was thinking about it for, like, days on end. So like, hmm, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I wonder why they didn't go into that. And I was like, huh. I was thinking about my Wi-Fi not being on, so. <laughs> yeah, I got to experience this movie plenty. It was awesome. Jealous. Jealous. But yeah, then she basically, so Coraline sees, like, on her de- like on her French porch, like, a bunch of cheese. And she's like, Ew. <laughs> <laughs> she's like oh they smell so she brings him up to her neighbor upstairs what's his name again the guy who voices the neighbor what's his name the russian guy right yeah yeah mr surrey mr surrey who is who... play voiced by the guy who produced or directed or he's in maybe he's in it he's a big deal he he's in john wick which, which is, is awesome. a movie we're definitely going to talk about one day like oh. i'm sure oh yeah but yeah, um, we're going to go into that, like, when she comes back to the normal world. But the main thing that the movie's trying to point out at that point is that life sucks in the real world compared yeah. to the normal. Like, things still suck. Her parents are still ignoring her. Yeah. So not She's great. still an only child. Still an only child. But yeah. Um, but yeah, she, so she's kind of, ha- she has a longing for the, uh, to go back, right? She's like, I hope it wasn't a dream. She's like telling her parents about it and they're like, okay, Coraline. Obviously not believing her. <laughs> like, whatever. And then she gets, a, she's up talking to her, another, her neighbor upstairs and then she's like, my mice told me about your other world. <laughs> your the little, danger. little door, the little door there. And he's like, okay. I'm just, does she go downstairs after to talk to... Ah, uh, yeah. That's when she goes to talk to her other neighbors, uh, Miss April and Miss Miriam. Which one's... Which one has... <laughs> <laughs> which one has the big bazonkers? Like, oh my god, They are huge. Wow. No, because sometimes you forget things. Because I watched this when I was a child, and you forget things, right? Okay, so what was Mr. Sergey doing before, right? Oh, so there's like a theory because he has like a medal and his skin is blue that he was uh he was one of the many people he was one of the people who like stopped the Chernobyl reactor Chernobyl reactor reactor and which like, is weird that it's Loki based on real life things yeah that's kind of weird like people's skin did go blue right no but like I find it weird that like this is kind of based in our reality yeah because chernobyl happened in real life yeah happened in this movie so it's like okay that's a little weird yeah but um the other characters miss april and miss mm-hmm. miriam mm-hmm. weren't they like they they did shows they were actresses on the stage slash kind of opera singers which yeah. is cool but when you know uh Coraline goes over to like introduce herself they're kind of washed up. They're yeah. They're not as cool as they used to be. They have dogs. Too many dogs. <laughs> 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 many dead dogs, which is so funny. I love how <laughs> Coraline pointing them out, and she's like, "Yeah, they're dead." You know, it's like we stuff she... them. <laughs> Every time a dog dies, she only likes this one breed of dog, and she has 20. Every time one dies, she gets its stuff and gets, like, angel wings on it and throws it on a shelf. And it's kind of... Kinda... <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know who the cat actor is. He's, like, a big actor, too. Keith David. Keith David. He's a big actor. He was in Community. He becomes a bigger character later on. Yeah. For now, he's just a cat. Sorry, guys. That was just my little... <laughs> Keith, Keith David. <laughs> I'm a little fan of him, actually. Anyways, um... But yeah, the the peep the little actors actresses are like, yo, drink some tea, and then you see them do stuff with the leaves and the tea, and it's a hand. Oh yeah, and they're like they're doing Coraline. like a palm reading, but with tea for some Which, reason. Yeah, no, it's weird. Wait, whatever, that's fine. And they're like, Coraline, you're in danger. And then the other one's like, No, you're not. You're gonna go to the zoo. So you're like, who knows? I'm sorry. This is one of those Coraline dumb moments. She Coraline, got two yeah. warnings that she might be in danger, and she's like. Nah, Coraline's go, too cool for that. No, she's Even gonna go fuck. back. Like if we were in if we were in school, Coraline, Coraline, look at us and be like, you guys are kind of nerdy. <laughs> yeah, no, Coraline would like kick ass. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
But yeah. She just ignores all their advice and goes to bed, hoping she goes, she'll go back to the alternate world. She leaves cheese out this time. Gotta get those mice back to lead her back. Exactly. And then the mice come back, and she goes back into the world, and then other mothers, like, thanks for the cheese, and she's like, yeah. Yeah. And then she, Cor- then Coraline's, then other mothers, like, yo, you remember that kid you were talking to, YB? This is him, but he can't talk. And she's like, hell yeah. Because like, she finds YB love... annoying, which, fair enough for yeah. YB. He's a bit of a strange guy, but you know what? I love YB. All my homies love YB, guys. But once again, other mom is trying to impress her. Yeah. Every time she comes through the door, she gets a huge meal. And, like, back at home, she's eating, like, spinach. Spinach. Kids don't like spinach, yeah. so it doesn't... Coraline's not having it. They did, like, something that I love that you can do, like... Stop motion is their food could either look amazing or just disgusting. It looks pretty cool in the scene. Like the scene, the, the first meal, you see that food and you're like, Me as an adult, I don't want to eat that food. <laughs> <laughs> Me as a child, disgusting. Me in the other mother world, like, I want to eat that food. <laughs> but one thing that is interesting about the movie, um, well, this gets explained, but the first time she goes into the dimension, we're kind of backtracking here, mm. she had a poison ivy stain yeah. on her arm. And when she woke up the next morning, like, other mother put mud on it to heal it up. And it was gone the next morning, confirming that this is real. None also, of it's a dream. other father, he can sing. And actually be cool. <laughs> Da-da, making up a song about Coraline. Really cool scene. Da-da-da, awesome. Da-da-da, that probably took forever as well. I know. Honestly. Oh my gosh. Everything. How long? You sent me a I was about to say, shot. by the way, everyone, this movie took over four years to make. Which is why when you guys, which is why when a stop motion, oh my gosh, when a stop motion movie comes out, you should buy it and watch it in theaters. And appreciate the hell out of it. A lot yeah. of work goes into this. Yes. This has to be my favorite stop motion movie of all time. I haven't watched too many, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. As, but this has to be my favorite. As someone who used to make little stop motion videos on its iPod Touch. This when was, is for sure better, <laughs> what you know. <laughs> when he was 13, and that took me hours, this def like, it's much better. Yes. But yeah, so night two, oh my gosh, night two happens... She goes to a little fair, right? Yeah, she does. She goes? Okay. And you see all these little mice, and they're cute. Doing their thing. Doing their thing. Once fun. again, other mother is trying to lure her into the perfect world. Because she's having a blast. Yeah. Even new YB with his button eyes, she's liking YB. Yeah. And I want to point this out, because YB is already kind of a strange character, at first, but you kind of get a feel for how YB is. But new YB, he turns into like a cartoon. His movements are very exaggerated. He's literally like a rag doll on strings as if he's being pulled by mm-hmm. something. His legs and arms are all wonky the way he walks. But at the same time, he has a forced smile on him at all times. He looks cheerful. Yeah. And it's not, he doesn't really, he literally wants Coraline to get out of there. Like, that's one thing I found interesting. They are sentient. They're yeah. not all, like, mind control. They kind of feel bad because they know they're luring her into a trap. Exactly. They know what they're doing is wrong for sure. But, yeah. But is this... Is the second night where they give her the offer? That's or is that third night? The third night. And I think... Maybe go to the end of second night. Yeah. Guys, we're going to cut this out maybe. Probably not, though. Do it. You need to do your editing stuff, dude. <laughs> I don't want to be like that guy in the chair. Just do it. Oh, it's Cam Kenya. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, gloves. Uh huh. You're cutting this out now. I will no have to cut choice. this out. Yeah. We're cutting. Mm. I don't... Yeah, she just wakes up. I guess night goes pretty well in general. Yeah. She meets other. Basically, like she meets other YB. She meets the guy, the neighbor upstairs. What's his name again? Uh, Mister. Yeah, Sir... that name is always gets away. Sergey. Sergey. Okay. Fantastic. And once again, everyone she sees in the world is better than their normal selves. Yeah. Sergey, he's not a washed up performer anymore. He's really talented. He's yeah. got his army of mice, and he's really, really good at it. Yeah. He can set up an entire show, and it's really well done. And then. 
yeah, and she goes shopping for mom. She, Coraline wants to buy gloves that are twenty six dollars. Yeah, I don't know what's inflation in this world. I don't know what country she's in. U.S. They're in Oregon. Right. They are in America. Twenty six like, bucks is a lot of money. Twenty six bucks for mitts. Whoa. I under like never. I don't relate to the mom a lot. She's kind of mean to Coraline, but like in that situation, I'm like, I'm not buying mitts for twenty. Like they were knitted mitts too. They're not like they're good mitts that would keep your fingers from frostbite. Dude, they might be Gucci mitts though. But where are they gonna keep your fingers from frostbite? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. In a Canadian winter. We're not in Canada. What the fuck you just Oregon, said? Oregon. Oregon's like. Where's not in Oregon? Canada. Oregon on a map. <laughs> okay. Anyway, though, she gets back from the mall with her mom, and her mom has to go, neglecting her again. Mm. And she gets the bright idea to see if she can go into the other world before nighttime. Because up, up until then, every time it's nighttime, she's she been thinks, lured yeah. into it. And she this thinks time, it's a dream. she wants to go check it out on herself, see if there's a brick wall or if she can actually go. She did the most only child thing and stacked up all the books to get a key all by herself and then she went into the room and what you know it's, it works <laughs> it's not fake she's not dreaming it worked again this at this point confirms it's 100 percent real and she can just go here whenever yeah so she's getting further manipulated at this point yeah this is also the point where we get to meet the cat yep she... up until then the cat just seems to be like a wandering cat and if you ever watch the trailers for Coraline, the cat says you think everything in this world is perfect, perfect, but you're wrong. The cat knows everything. If you watch the trailer when you're like seven or eight or older, you know what we're talking about here. But yeah, then she goes to watch a play. <laughs> and wow. Yeah, you see a lot. Tiggle bitties. One, that's all I gotta say. You know, you guys, if you, I don't know if you know about this, but there's like a thing on, there's like a thing on TikTok, someone threw their bra to Drake, and Drake is like, whoa, what are these? That was the, <laughs> someone drew like a comically large bra at Drake, and they were like, it's to the point they were so big. I think the effect works though, because even Coraline shocked. Yeah. It was supposed to shock you, but once again, they actually do pull off a good show. These are the the two neighbors, those two, uh, Miss April and Miss Miriam. And they put on a great show. They're not washed up in the other world. They're actually talented. Oh, straight! <laughs> <laughs> her boobs are bigger than her heads, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh my god! That hurts. That would hurt Ooh. so much to move. Oh yeah, okay, that part was weird. They, they became... slip out of their skin, and next thing you know, they're even better than before. And they're younger, so younger. this movie's saying young Sorry, people, old people, old people are awful. <coughs> Sorry, I need to recover from that. <laughs> oh my gosh! But this... after this, other mother goes in for the kill. She tries to get Caroline to join her Coraline. in the world and stay forever. Shut up, bitch! You've been stuttering this entire fucking time. <laughs> You're like my sister. No. Um, but yeah, Coraline, they're like, you can change your eye colors. You can stay everything. here forever. You just gotta put butt in your eyes. It's like, not that big of a deal, Coraline. No. Gats light. And Coraline's like, I don't really want buttons in my eyes. She doesn't immediately say no, though. She tries to stall. Yeah. See, like, oh, I gotta go to bed. You know, like, oh, yeah. I'll sleep on it, guys. She goes up to her bed and she falls asleep. And unlike before, she she's still in the other world. That's pretty spooky. She can't fall asleep. She's like in the bed, and I'm like, oh, this would be my nightmare. Not being able to wake up, like not being able to go you back. Can't wake home. up from your nightmare. It's like she's trapped there now. So she wakes up and she goes to see her family, the other family, obviously. Yeah. And this is where she starts to realize that the cat was right about <laughs> everything being a trap. Mm -hmm. She talks to her dad, who. Is still trying to play along, but he's starting to lose his grip on being Everett, yeah. awesome in front of Caroline. Because he knows. Mm -hmm. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh my gosh. Okay. Other mother, it's like, Coraline, you're being a little bitch. <laughs> being a little bitch. And yeah, Coraline's she's still like, stalling. And Coraline's not a fucking fan. Coraline gets put in this mirror and then she meets three ghosts and the three ghosts are like, yo, can you give us her eyes back? Because we're trapped in here because she we, took her... We did what you did, basically. She took her eyes away and Coraline's like, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Coraline 
is able to go home because of other YB. Other YB saved hit saved her ass. Let's go. And then she goes home and her parents are gone. And then she Uh-oh. then she has to go to bed. And I laughed when I saw this. She had to make like little 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 pillow versions of her parents. And she's like, Good night, mom. Good night, dad. <laughs> and then she starts to cry. That's only child behavior. Nice one, Caroline. I thought you were tough. You're not tough. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, and then <laughs> and then YB just flat out calls her crazy because Caroline like admits to all the things that's happening. And he's like, Nah, you're crazy, dude. It's valid. Valid, yeah, it's of valid. course, for sure. Then uh, she goes down to talk to her the na- like the actors, and they're like, We're gonna give you this little thingy to help you see things. I wish I learned more about that because there's no. I don't know how they know. They literally chopped up a bunch of old taffy that's hard as a rock and made like a tool that allowed you to see into like, you allowed you to see the eyes of the t- like. I don't know. Yeah, no. I don't know how they did that. But they did. This was kind of at the point where I was thinking of the theory that maybe this is all her imagination. I don't believe that. No. But there's like a plausible like a kid could take an inanimate object and mm-hmm. make it into something more cool than it is. Quick, quick side note: they're starting to make wings for another dog. <laughs> which is awesome dying. it's awesome um but yeah then Coraline's like i have to go get my parents and then you see the cat the cat's like yo this is dangerous dude and then the cat goes in and the cat saved her life at this point if the cat didn't follow her in that little tunnel she would be fucked like oh, yeah. the cat literally said the other mother likes a game if you do like a challenge or a game you're she'll do it like if I like, if I was Coraline's age, I wouldn't think about that, right? I'd be like, "Can you give me back my parents?" And I'd be dead. I'm pretty sure the little kid said that, not the cat. No, the cat definitely said it. I don't know. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> I swore that was the did tip. I, I thought I... that was the tip the little kids gave. Like, like oh, they said. By the way, she likes a game. No, because like the cat and the kid said it. Probably I don't know, but I remember the cat saying it because I'm pretty sure I wrote it down. Go cat. <laughs> Nope, I didn't write it down. Anyways, anyways, it never happens. <laughs> she's in there. She sees her mom. She runs up to her mom. It's the other mother. Bum bum bum. Bitch. And then the other mom's like, "You're gonna." She has like an hour to find all the eyes of her, of the other children, of the missing children, the missing children. And Coral like, "Okay, bet." And then she's Cor- she's got a lot of stuff on her plate at this point. She has to save her family, which she has no idea where her parents are, and has to like free the kids' souls. She also finds out around this point that, like, you wa- if you walk straight, you're just going to come back to the house. Because that's how big the world is. Yeah. I, the way I would like to think of this is, like, it's Pocket? almost like, I don't know, like a Minecraft world. She yeah. built this entire world her, by herself, the other mother, to be yeah. exactly the way she wanted it. Once you go out of the zone, there's just nothing there because she didn't work out there. Exactly. Coraline's not going out there, but she does. And then she just comes back. Um, She fights... Fights like a, fights her other dad, and the dad kind of gives her a thing like the one gives eye. One of the eyes, and kid. then she goes down to the theater. Theater, and they wanted to give you a little jump scare, and they kind of prepared you for it. The two ladies like ah, they were at like her some stuff. weird egg sack thing. It was weird. That was weird. Also, there were bat dogs, which was awesome. Yeah. Go bat no, dogs. We love that. No, absolutely. The point is, Coraline kicked all of their asses. She also Did she also fight the last guy, too? Uh, ooh, the last guy. The Russian. What's his name? You know, the guy. Oh, yeah. Kicked. No, she kicks his ass, too. Kicks the, obviously. And then she loses the key, but she can't find her parents in time. And then, basically, she lost the stuff because of that. The cat brings it back to her. She sees her parents in a snow globe breaks the snow globe and then she throws the cat at the other mother and then she gets out of there locks the door gets the other mother that, also that was the scariest part yeah the other mother also swallows the key so she's like my parents are like somehow she got out of the coffin mom she, she was smart she said like my parents are right there right she's in there on the other side of the door she coughs up the key opens it and then she's able to get the key from that yeah, and then everything just comes spider spider web. Reb. She also got the cat got the eyes off the mother. This and is then... kind of the point where other mother stops pretending to be, like who Caroline wants to be. This is like her true form. Yeah, she's I don't know if I'd go demon, like witch. Demon? She she's yeah. explained as like a witch creature. She's been doing this for a while. Yeah, and yeah, 
and then like everything from the spider web she climbs out and then she locks the door and it's so scary it's a little they're scary. really hammering at the door like yeah. she wants in the screaming yeah really good voice acting she nailed that part but yeah and then the Coraline goes to bed her parents are back great awesome and then she's like yo parents don't believe her about anything they don't remember anything either so another thing that's like it could be a dream could be a dream <laughs> who knows who knows and then yeah uh the main uh other mother's hand does escape at one point yeah but then, i mean why be the fucking hero kills it kills like it for rock awesome. throws it in the water throws it down the well like a boss and then they all end the movie of gardening. That's Coraline, guys. We did it. It's a great, not even great ending. The whole movie's awesome. The whole movie's good. Okay, you can give your review. How many, oh, what are we, uh, what are we gonna rate Dog it with, with wings. <laughs> We're doing dead dogs. <laughs> with wings? Uh, half a wing. Half a wing? These okay. guys didn't quite make it to heaven, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I'm giving this an easy. Uh, nine dogs... In a half. Okay, my letterbox review would be, this movie, when I was like seven, I watched this movie. It was really scary. Now that I'm 22, you can not appreciate so- appreciate the art. Now I'm 22, love the art, the story's great, and it's not scary anymore. I'm would gonna... recommend if you're 22 plus. Oh yeah. And if you don't have arachnophobia, because this yeah. would fuck someone up if they- that or part like, where she turns into a spider? Yeah. Terrifying if you have arachnophobia. Please do not watch this if you Anyways, have this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my recommend. This is the movie that I recommended for this week. We're doing... it's our, So this month, we're going to do spooky movies. It's October. It's October. So our podcast is now called Please Watch Our Spooky Podcast. Very creative, Thank as you. you can see. Thank you. So I don't know what our next podcast podcast is going to be. We're going to post something. We'll post something. We'll keep you informed. Anyways... This has been a hell of a thing to record. Fuck Rogers. All my homies hate Rogers. I'm Connor. I'm saying goodbye. Thank you all for stopping by. Turn it off. <laughs> <laughs>